Hello and welcome back to the Academy stream where we are at the halftime show for our last series of the day and that series of the week as I know that, you know, bad magical, uh, we on Academy have a little bit of a different task, right? Our wonderful counterparts at the LCS, you know, a lot of times those casters, you know, they cover three games. Well, here we cover three mm. series and that can sometimes be especially taxing on our play-by-plays mm. as mad magical, you know, it's getting some water, taking a little bit of a break. Well, guess what? I've got a special surprise for you, oh, Mad Magical. What's that? I, I definitely could use one because this ain't just water. It's caffeine, too. I need to stay awake. Yeah, I, well, I mean, you need to stay awake. I need to stay awake. We've got one more game, and, you know, I, I'm kind of feeling the drag, too. We've, we've gone through five games. We have a sixth. We need to introduce someone to hype us up, uh, someone that can get us to this game six, as we've got assistant coach Gungus. Uh, magical. Uh, Cubby called me in here. He said that you were uh, maybe a little tired. So uh, I, I wanted to give you a, a, a little bit of advice here uh, during, during the halftime show. Um, first of all, uh, you can take it slow when you need to. You know, like TLA Dig A, no kills, seven and a half minutes. You don't have to rush it now, okay? Uh, but on that topic, when, when I'm feeling tired uh, and out of sorts, uh, I like to think about my heroes, you know, um, and what they would say. And I, I actually um, I'm no better heroes than we saw in that last game, okay? So this is what I need from you, Magical. I need you to be fierce, okay? Okay, Magical, I need you to be fierce. Fierce like Bradley going full red build and face tanking whilst DPSing. Not about the size of the dog in the fight, you know? It's about the size of the fight in the dog. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I also need you to be dedicated. You need you to be dedicated to the craft just like our Mayo. You know, standing his ground in a barren pit with four members of Dignitas around him and still securing that objective. That's dedication, you know? Good things come to those who press F. You know, Smite on F. He's one of those. I, I, you know, another thing, another thing you can do, look at Harry. Be creative, okay? Creative like Harry. Blocking OP.GG from his web browser. Doesn't even use that site. Making his own unique build, okay? Creativity. That's what it comes down to, you know? And I know that you got that. I know you have that, Magical. I know you're creative. I also, you know, one, one final one. Actually, I got two more final ones, but the next one, resilient, you know, resilience, like Jan, you know, fed two kills early, he, he, he got a little fed, then dying three times before the second dragon, that's fine, because he participated in all the kills up to that point, right? You know, it doesn't really matter how much he died, because it ain't about how hard you're hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward, mm. okay? Yeah, you, you following, Magical? You following? Now, final, final point, final point. <clears throat> I need you to be ambitious, you know? ambitious like rhino flashing in as karma for first blood and then transitioning that to peeling for yan now being a nuisance on karma you know some people say our hero should be you in 10 years i say your hero should be hairy should be ambitious should be rhino should be everybody that we just saw in that last game okay now uh uh any questions here before we get ready for for pick and ban magical uh, are you feeling yeah, inspired who are you again I'm assistant coach Kiss. You, you I, I brought him in just for you, Matt Magical. Why Bobby, who is this guy? Back? His questions are all over the place. I, I, apparently, he just really wants to know who you are and where you're from. All right. Well, I hope that I could give you some uh, motivation, Magical. I I spent this time away from my team uh, during this, you know, halftime to, to give you that talk. But I got to get right back because uh, Pick and Band is starting soon. Uh, you don't know that. You don't he's know a, that. He's a consultant. All right, but. I'm going to pass it back to the casters now uh, to get us ready for the next game. Why'd you bring him back? I I don't I thought you could use a boost, you know? That's uh, I, Caffeine. I, I I liked his content game 1. It, it was very motivating for me. Hearing him say the standard is the standard. And you know what? The standard is the standard, and the standard here is six games. So That's true. we got to bring you a six game as we're about to get into the second game of our best two. Matt Magical, how are you feeling after that? You know, I will say I do feel a little bit more motivated, but mostly just because I just want to see his the look at the end of the day on uh, assistant coach Gus, how, whatever, <laughs> however you say his name. I just want to see the look on his face when it's like, we, we finished this. It's been a fun day. It's been a fun week of games. And also, you know, whether or not he's still going to have a job at the end of it all. That's actually a great point. Uh, as I mean, th that is the reality of being a consultant. So we're going to have to see if he's going to be consulting us any further. Uh, but as we start to consult what happened in the last game, 
I think that Team Liquid, I I mean, I really want to credit them for their turnaround from week one to week two. Uh, I know that week one, one and three start, obviously, we, we mentioned it at the start of the series, not the start the Team Liquid Academy wanted, but I mean, I, I think that the way they've been able to turn this around, and especially the play of Rhino, who really struggled in the first week, he's been very sound in Team Liquid's three wins they've put on the board so far in week two, and they're looking to join the likes of CLG with a perfect 4-0 week. All right, you know what? You know who does motivate me, though, and I hope will motivate the players further? That is our host, Kangas. So let, why don't we bring him back? That That's a good way to motivate me, get me ready for this next game. So, Kangas, oh. it's good having you back. Me? You're welcome. Well, thank you, Magical. I, I don't know where that's coming from, but I appreciate the... Uh, y your, your energy seems so high right now. <laughs> is this that, is great. I love I this. not always just energetic? Five games, but you're ready to go. Did you see this guy like, <laughs> well, chugging soda? I, of course, his energy is high. I didn't see that off off uh, okay. offcast or uh, you know, off stream, so, so so maybe I'm missing out right now. But uh, yeah, what a game number one from Team Liquid Academy, guys! They are not skipping a beat now that Harry's in. the The one and three start can be a thing of the past here because their future is looking very bright. Uh, and I of course want to bring attention specifically to how focused they were in those early stages of the game, playing to the top side of the map giving up those early dragons, but getting the heralds and getting an advantage so that by the time soul fight was up, they were in a really good spot for it. I think it's a good way to play around that Graves Trinidad matchup. Just you know, make sure that the junglers are always up there so Trinidad doesn't get those angles where you can potentially find the all-wins. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. something where not only was Armeo able to prevent that, but also, I mean, of course, you mentioned netting the Rift Heralds as well. Getting gold on a composition that scales early I will always take that instead of taking the dragons, right? I really want, like, to make sure I'm hitting those item spikes. And I think that was what the big difference was in that last fight as Harry. I mean, the package, the fact that you had the Storm Razor and the Rapid Fire Cannon to apply that slow at a further margin uh, was a bit of a different quirky build than what we're used to seeing. But I do think it made some sense. And it was good to see Team Liquid uh, put together a comp and a game that made a lot of sense to me as well as they found that game one win. The thing that I noticed about the build is it felt like it was more intended for either getting into the fight and then kiting out on the other side, or just kiting away from the Trindomir who's going to be trying to dive onto you, rather than just maximizing your DPS with rockets. <laughs> so you know, I'll, I'll hold off my judgment. I'll let the actual big brains determine if that was the correct decision or not, but I like the attempt there, of course. And yeah, I mean, XU put a lot of effort into that bot lane. He was constantly down there looking for those ganks, even diving on two different occasions. So... Uh, I mean, obviously, it's results-based analysis that that didn't work out for them. It looked like things were going well for them at first, but, uh, yeah, of course, it just came down to those team fights around the big objectives like the Baron, like the Dragons. So, let's start thinking about going into this next game now. This is the final game of the day and the final game of the week, everybody. So, hopefully, it closes out on a banger. Magical, I'm going to throw this one to you. Give me the big brain magical take here. What Dignitas Academy can look to do to well, turn they around are the fortunes swapping in the it series. up. They're going to be on blue side going into this game. And the Corky, I think, was a big issue. This gives them an opportunity to grab that immediately. So they don't have to worry about that on Harry. Honestly, even looking at their bands, LeBlanc, Thresh, Jinx, don't really have an issue with a lot of those bands. I mean, unless they are worried about the Twisted Fate maybe making its way through, the Corky seems like a great option to immediately grab and... Darkwings can do use that into Hayri. We've only really seen Hayri play now. LeBlanc and Corky. Granted, he just came back this week. But mm -hmm. three games. It's three games. You know, it's a small sample yeah, pool, and we know he can play <laughs> a lot more. But that's still something that's going to be difficult to really contend against since we saw how well Corky can be piloted. I've only seen Harry put up dubs. I, I feel like that that's what we got to say. Yeah. True. Yeah. 100% win rate right now. 3-0. and I mean, come on. Uh, but I do have to say, in order for the script to be completed, Dignitas has to win this one because we have to have a member uh, go into their studio room with their camera and their microphone and then us not get them on uh, interview after the game. So they have to do a social post about it later. Uh, that, it's in the script. I mean, I don't make this stuff up. Uh, but I'm hearing that we're ready to hop in to pick and pan, guys. So I'm going to pass it back over to the two of you to close us out with the final game of the week. It will be a lot of fun. We'll see how the teams swap things up with Dignitas onto the blue side. Team Liquid, though, they're looking hot now that they got Hagri back on the squad, and the mid lane is looking really good. But I want to see Dignitas and whether or not they're going to put that priority onto the Corky. Because they are on blue side, more than likely we're going to see the bands change up for both squads. But that gives, I think, a lot of opportunity for Dignitas to grab something that they feel a lot more confident immediately blind picking. 
I think that Gwen uh, and Kragas have been two pretty big picks for Eclipse on the mm -hmm. blue side. Uh, and uh, Eclipse, you know, a pretty spectator game on the Trinomir that time around, but uh, Eclipse has been one of the better... I, I, I say that, like, this roster is a bit of a surprise, and I think Eclipse has been a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking back to the game one win yesterday that Dignitas had... It was really Eclipse playing that Gragas and comboing with Spawn to make sure that the right people were getting knocked back with the cast, and he was the big frontliner buying space for Spawn to pump out all that damage on the Jinx, and then think back to other games where Eclipse has been really useful on uh, the Gwen as well, as she's played in half his games, uh, so I think the blue side may, might fit Dignitas' game plan around that champion pool a little bit better, and... I am curious to see what happens with the Corky, because honestly, what I thought would happen is I thought that Dignitas would drop the Thresh ban uh, and, you know, try and force that ban out of Team Liquid and maybe take away the Corky themselves. But instead, uh, Team Liquid, they decide that they don't want to see the first pick Corky and Dignitas are back to the drawing board about what they might take away last as they are spending a little bit extra time on this one. Wondering if they want to ban that Jinx again here on blue side and then leave the Twisted Fate as an option. But that also leaves Lee Sin. Something that XU really likes to play. So there we go. That's Ooh. what I wanted to see coming in from Dignitas, forcing the issue. If Team Liquid want to take away one of those champions, that means guaranteed Dignitas is going to get together. That actually does say a lot to me as well because uh, JJ has only played Nautilus, uh, which is now five games versus two Karma games. And both times they played Karma, it was first pick. So they're taking away their own first pick. Which means that, to me, they have something else up their sleeve and in their minds. Lee Sin. Uh, Lee Sin, man. Vic yeah, honestly, it could be Lee Sin, as XU is 2-0 on that champion, including a win on the LCS stage. But those Lethal Temple carries, pretty strong still in the meta. We did mention Spawn's standout Jinx game, especially the first game yesterday. Uh, gonna be the option here, as Dignitas keep on putting faith in that rock they've had in the bot lane in Spawn. And it's a... It's a great takeaway from Yon as well. Denying that into the bot lane for the side of Team Liquid. And Team Liquid, um, Armeo is not really a player that I know for his Lee Sin. The Jarvan makes a lot more sense. So they, instead of grabbing that Lee Sin to take it away from XU, they leave it open. They grab this Jarvan to try to see if they can fight a little bit in the early game and look for that early bit of pressure with the skirmish capabilities. And Armeo's Jarvan yesterday was fantastic as he played at both games, which led to two wins for the side of Team Liquid. Uh, also, the Ophelios now for Yawn. I don't think that surprises anyone, given the fact that's the response it carries. And uh, Yawn's very comfortable on Ophelios as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm curious now to see what Dignitas' response is, because this is where we're going to start to see really the identity the, the identity that they want to run with for this game. You mentioned Axios Lee Sin. Is. It's on the table. That seems to be locked in. And now I'm wondering if they lock in an early support. And if so, what that might be. Because Jinx, you want some protection. Uh, I guess you could take something like a no. Nautilus, yeah, Nautilus here not, to combo Nautilus is what again. I was thinking. JJ, you can combo pretty well with the Even traps. if that last game wasn't necessarily the best performance out of Dignitas, JJ was constantly fishing for those hooks, constantly looking to see who he could find out of position, and it put a lot of pressure initially on Yon and Rhino. No longer do they have that karma to kind of give them the shields, a little bit of poke to harass these members in the bot lane. Instead, yes. they're trying to change up the pace to allow a little bit more things to be alleviated into the bot lane for Yon. All right, so I'm a Braum enthusiast. Uh, when I peaked GM uh, Season 10, Braum, I was the number one Braum NA. This is a really good game for Braum, uh, going into both Nautilus and Jinx. It's a good way to at least deter Nautilus from going in, because you can always trade a Q with the dredge yeah. line as the Braum, and Ophelios can proc those winner's bites really quickly, provides really nice peel. I like this combo a lot for Ophelios, and I feel like Team Liquid has a sound game plan to make sure that if Dignitas are going to be jumping in and on top of this Ophelios yet again, Yon already has a lot of tools at his disposal. We saw how Armeo was able to utilize those cataclysms to use them as terrain chokes, to put Ophelios behind that, make sure that Yon was always able to pump out damage, uh, which they did really well yesterday when Yon was on the Jinx. They have full faith that he can do that on the Ophelios in this game. Now I just want to see how they combo around it as... We have top laners being taken away by Team Liquid, a couple of the ones that they might not want to see as a blind pick, and also mid laners being taken away by the side of Dignitas. And honestly, my eyes right now really go on the Akali, Mad Magical, as that is a big pick for both teams It's here. an interesting pick. Bradley, we know, 
I mean, on the LCS mm -hmm. stage in the lock-in tournament, played that champion and got a lot of highlights on that. He looked really good on it. So does Dignitas want to take that away? Because I only um, can imagine that if you're Team Liquid, that is even a good flex pick. Harry can play it pretty well. We've seen him on the Assassins. Bradley is going to be able to pilot that amazingly in the top lane. And that leaves pretty much what you normally would have as the blind pick for Team Liquid that you could counter as Dignitas now up in the air. You're scared. There's the Akali being taken away. I, I like that ban because it is a flex for Team yep. Liquid on four. Uh, and now they do have the option to blind Gwen if they would like to do that. Probably uh, going to be the this case, This is right? a champion. I, it, I'm it. i expecting a mid. If they really wanted to get weird, though, they could take that away because Eclipse has... That's been Eclipse's number one blind pick. And I think that Gwen actually sets up pretty well uh, for what Dignitas wants to do. So... Team Liquid do have that option, and it will indeed be the Gwen. I'm now expecting the Gragas to come out as the counter for Eclipse. We've been seeing a lot of blue side Gragas and LCK, uh, given the fact that Gragas is able to get out of Wayne's states, you know, pretty evenly, and also has great tools to deal with these lethal tempo carries in the later parts of the game. Eclipse did a great job of utilizing the Gragas yesterday in their game. Now, a set would be very different, and this would really tell me that Dignitas is looking at Dogpile. Please. I, I like seeing set. They yep. lock it in for Eclipse in this top lane. And the one thing about Gwen is people always have these counter Ooh. picks that you want to be able to play. Everyone has their own flavor. You were talking about the Gragas. We've seen Eclipse play that into Gwen. Set is a good one. Do we see a but Cassio? this is interesting. Azir blind pick by Darkwings. Continuing to go with these unique champions. I think every champion he's played once, only a couple has he played twice. He really does try to change it up with this big champion pool that he has. But Harry now has a couple options yeah. that he can fall back to. What does he want to counter? It's going to be the, the rise. rise to try to see if he can answer Azir. Harry's also kind of known for Cassiopeia play. I, I, it's not... You can kind of play it into Azir. I was hoping that he would maybe get a little bit fancy. Wasn't like Tank, the rise uh, is the tank Cassiopeia kind of a thing right now? I would hate if that's the case. Uh, if it is, then pilot at your own <laughs> risk uh, when it's going into solo queue. But Harry, I, this does give TL the ability to play in sides. And I think the big concern for me on the side of Dignitas is as this game goes on, Set is going to get bullied in these side lanes. So I, I think it's very important that Dignitas and Axiu are able to do things off of the first few crashes they have on the map. And keep in mind yesterday, Axiu in that second game on this Lee Sin was 4-0 and at the four minute mark. And he did everything that Dignitas needed to get going in that series. And I want to see if he can put on a similar performance in this game, because I think Dignitas are going to need that, especially from him early, if they want to even up the series to wrap up this I'm going to kind of keep my eyes on Harry to see if we get another unique build path out of a different champion. Last time, the Corky had a build path we're not really used to. Yesterday, Jimian, when he piloted the Rise, he had more... It's going to be that, that was like He had more of the tanky build path, and that can be utilized here because they already have Gwen yep. to be able to bring yep. back that AP damage. No, I, I think that's going to be the build here for Harry, and that's a good call out, Mad Magical, is I know you always like to go to the lab to find uh, some new ways to play League of Legends. Whether they're good or bad, that one is good, and we'd hey. like to see Harry do that in this game. Uh, I mean, AP Tristana, come on. It works, man! It works. It works! It still works okay. if you try hard enough, but right now, we got to try hard enough in our final game of the day for Week 2. It is Day 2, Series 3. Team Liquid took game one, but Dignitas, they swap up the sides. They get the set into Gwen at the top lane. They've got XU's Lee Sin, Darkwing's on Azir. A lot of fun champions across the board. And I think Darkwing's on Azir is something that we really have to keep our eyes out for. I know that Darkwing's uh, in six games has played five unique champs. And I know that last year in Proving Grounds, in the 41 games that he played, he played 20 different champions. So... This player's champion pool, we know it's deep. Azir is very much comfort for the side of Darkwings. And I, I think that the way that Dignitas has to really play this is in it, like start off fights so that Darkwings can combo. Because we're in another game where a depth charge can lead to a Sharima shuffle. And all of a sudden, Yawn finds himself on the wrong side of a team, right? We didn't see Dignitas be able to execute that cleanly enough times in the last game to net a win. This time around, I really want to see if they can do it. Plus, you have XU on that lead sin. We think about our highlight plays. We've already had in Academy. Rose Thorn, that kick that he had on Lee Sin. One that's going to Ooh. 
He's going to be proud of for ages and ages coming in from the Academy split. But there, it wasn't a little mm -hmm. attempted trade coming in from JJ. I uh, wouldn't expect anything less from him on this Nautilus. Always looking for these plays, but it's as you said. It is a rough lane to really always fish for those hooks because immediately Winter's Bite will come out from Rhino, allowing that Concussive Flow stack to immediately be channeled. That to be fair, not that time. As or that time. Rhino, yeah. Uh, JJ, finding some nice positive trades here early. Rhino, not able to trade back. Uh, I think, though, you know, shifting our focus up to the top side, I did tease out the Gwen, how that's kind of a deny from Eclipse. When this champion came out, Bradley was playing at mid and going legendary in amateur games consistently as his Gwen was 100% what he was known for early on in his time with Wildcard Red as a mid laner. And so the fact that, you know, with his role swap up to the top side, I think that he's been put in positions where he's playing champions that he played previously and can be comfortable on those. This is yet another example of something that Bradley was known for playing and it's not the easiest matchup early, but one that Bradley should be comfortable with as this game goes on. At the moment, at least he has a level lead. Snip, snip damage onto Eclipse, but now that they're even, oh, Facebreaker Ooh. not connecting. So Bradley will be able to walk away. Saunter as the minions start to crash towards the turret. And I love how Armeo's up here to hover as well. Spotting out XU. Might look to steal this one away. Would possibly, but it's still until Lisa. Broke you. There is no smite on either side. They have to be careful, but top lane. There it is. Oh my god, Eclipse. First Bloods, Bradley. Armeo was too late. A mistake from Bradley as Eclipse is actually able to pull those minions with him, which enabled him to land that face breaker, get the stun, and teased how this matchup is difficult for the Gwen early. That's why Eclipse went for this counter pick, is able to hit the timer. Mistake from Bradley. Uh, puts the top winner of Team Liquid behind early. And I actually love that you talk about you talked about how the minions got pulled by Eclipse there. Because normally when you yeah. look at how lanes are, you don't want to fight into minions because it can be bad for you. Except Set. He thrives in that because he can get the immediate stun with the help of the minions. And so now he has this lead. The wave is actually frozen. So Bradley is forced to play aggressively in order to make sure that the wave is actually getting taken down by the turret. Oh no. I love the timer up here from XU as well. Is Bradley in trouble yet yes, again? Yes, he is. Snip, snip, damage coming in, but Eclipse is too far. No smite either. Look at Armeo Wait, on Armeo the other side. Here. He's able to smite down the Krug so he can gain a little bit of health, but Eclipse is there to make sure they can dodge away from the timers and get a kill for Ooh. XU while Armeo has to go back to the base. And another flash away means the flag and drag doesn't connect. XU's gambit pays off. Bradley doesn't have TP. And all of a sudden, Dignitas have set up this top lane kingdom with their two new members, really taking it to Bradley early. And this is the this is the Eclipse XU duo that we've been seeing so far in Academy, playing this aggressively, trying to get these early leads and snowball out of control. We saw it yesterday in their game too. This time we're seeing it once more onto the top lane. Poor Bradley. It is only five minutes into the game and he's already 0-2. I mean, it's going to be poor Bradley once uh, Eclipse gets back in the lane and flexes some of that item differential that he has in his back pocket. That's where things are start going to start to get real tough. And I, this makes things difficult for the side of Team Liquid because that is really the lane where they had to focus on early. If you get Bradley ahead in the set matchup, set has no way of getting back into this matchup. So uh, now when you look at Armeo, there's no flash. Azir's mobile. You're on the back foot in the bot lane of with Braum versus Nautilus. I mean, you can kind of eat the engages from Nautilus and return damage, but you're not going to be the one making first move or having priority on the Rift, no. so this really puts Team Liquid in a bind early. Plus mid lane, Azir versus Rise. It's kind of one of those lanes that we used to see a lot of the times where it was an inter uninteractive lane for the most part. They just try to clear out until they can get some levels and some items under their belt before they really want to look for anything. Uh, Harry does have flash, so we could see a flash in part of Rune Prison, but instead it's more action oh, the top side. Bradley. Bradley. It is just a top lane kingdom here for Eclipse. X is hitting all the right timers to make sure that his top lane are set up for success. Armeo not there to hover Bradley as he was trying to crash that one, and Bradley a little bit greedy here as Dignitas. This early game setup. I want to see like how what they can do with this because this is one of the changes that we have to the new season. I like a lot of times we used to see top laners get TP advantage, then make a play bot, so that power is instantly shifted. Eclipse is going to have the ability to do that now for another eight minutes. Uh, so 
I want to see if he is able to try and spread this lead. At the moment, it's just really Axu making sure that he's the one set up for success. But want to see if that changes as the game goes on. And we might have a powerful response here. Is you making his way into the bot side? Oh, he is spotted. Yes, yes. His bot lane's very low HP, and he should be able to get Armeo out of this. Mayo and Harry are right behind him as well. Realm Warp is available if they need to. You talked about the flash rune prison that mm -hmm. can come in from Harry. You utilize that, but they just didn't have the timers just in time to be able to actually fully go for that engage. This might actually open up a window for Armeo to take the dragon, as Yawn and Rhino did earn themselves. A nice health bar advantage in the bot lane thanks to their play. And should lead to the first neutral objective of the game going over the side of Team Liquid. Doubt that Dignitas are actually going to fight over this. It's a good call from them. They've got the leads elsewhere. No reason to smash their face into their opponents just yet. It's no call to be exactly. made. It's no call. It's like you're, you don't yeah. have the priority bot. You don't really have the priority mid. But a pull on a Rhino can at least net a little bit of damage on to the support and try to scare off Team Liquid's bot. All right, so if you want the true Brom tech, when that dredge line comes at you, you can immediately respond with Q before it connects and guarantee the trade. Uh, so I want to see if Rhino is able to do that as... This is actually like the one champion, one of the two champions I can play at like a decently high level uh, compared to these guys as... Uh, less to be known. Uh, yeah, these Academy players, they're pretty damn good at League of Legends. No. <laughs> we, we really can't hang with them besides this. Yeah, no. Uh, my my one thing that I have going for me is I remember playing uh, Vigar with Captain Flowers, and he was playing Charter. He invaded, and I flashed over the wall to make sure that we can get a double kill at level 3. And he was just like, I've never seen a Vigar flash that aggressively before. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should never see it again, but hey, hey if we it got works, a double it works, kill, right? and then the, the enemy jungler Huge. ended up disconnecting after I got another kill after that too. Oh wow, the mental yeah, diff! It was, it was big. As, oh boy! Speaking, yeah, of, uh, say, speaking of mental diff, Bradley, hey, he's okay though. He's happy. He's, okay, be yeah. happy over there. He's got Armeo in his back pocket too. So if anything is attempted again by XC right now, it should be something that they can actually fight over. We're always here for the bemotes as Armeo. Gonna try and get around and sneak this, but I don't know if he realizes he is on vision. As Dignitas, they're getting that blue buff over to Dark Wings, and Dark Wings uh -oh. is sitting on a, a decent item spike. Armeo's gonna have to at least eat Look at where out Rhino here. is. Look at where Yawn is. It's gonna be too little, too nice. late for JJ to be able to show up. It was a nice flag and drag oh. away, but they gotta be careful because the fight oh. that could be attempted here from Team Liquid is actually put them at a man disadvantage for Dignitas. That's why they have to run back towards the turret. Nice They've got the root onto Eclipse. He's using at least the showstopper with the Haymaker punch, but it's a Cataclysm on top of him. Shut down. Gold gifted over to Bradley. Team Liquid play that skirmish very, very well. I love how Bradley utilized that first ultimate to make sure that they landed the slow, got the empowered rune prison, and just isolated the clips. Now, the problem is, can they find more as they burned a lot well, of tools? Well, the thing is, they had the man advantage before. Rhino ticks down to the ignite so they can pick up one for one kill in the oh, whole yes. trade, but Yawn's been here this entire time, so they can get the flag and drag combo. If they can get the shutdown onto XC, that's going to be pretty big to make sure that he is not going to be a threat. They take two of them instead. Darkwing's in the middle of them, getting a lot of damage. The flash with the heal under Yawn, oh. but he's rooted in place. Double kill, Harry. Oh, Darkwing's not quite able to calculate the damage. And just like that, the early game advantage for Dignitas it goes out the window. Now, by dying there, it, they at least aren't going to give away the Rift Herald and honestly might get it for themselves as Bradley TP'd bot to get this wave. But all the good work they put in the top side early is now just gone. Exactly. All of that is out the window. A lot gained by Harry as well on this rise. 2 0 yeah. 2 early into the game. Even if he goes for the tankier route, we got to take a look at this replay. Because at first, it's a nice play on Rhino. It is, but once again, Dignitas are taking fights where they don't have numbers. As Yawn was rotating, uh, Spawn was not. So this just guarantees that, you know, you're opting into a fight where you're not in a winning situation. Darkwing's trying to do a lot with three soldiers. Just doesn't have the damage. Doesn't have the ultimate at the moment. And Dignitas end up falling to the wayside now find themselves in an even gold game when they had a pretty significant Coming. advantage early even during that eclipse tp'd in mid to try to see if he can back up mm. but because of the changes yeah. to tp he wasn't able to join fast enough uh, that's true as empowered tp of course not available until 14 minutes but fortunately enough for dignitas shelly is available to them as uh the three lives are not in vain shelly's in the back pockets should help out 
at least get Dig and Tells back into that position they had gotten themselves yeah. in in the early game. If they can get more kills onto someone like Rhino, that might help out, especially for XU. They continue to press forward. They've got so much damage to the Rock connecting on a Rhino as well, gifting the kill over to XU with Yawn having used Gale Force to escape. Rhino just caught out in no man's land. Didn't have a teammate to jump to. One of the difficulties of Brom, of course, is that uh, if you don't have friends, you really can't get out. Uh, so Rhino going to gift one over there. A bit of a mistake. We saw a lot of that from Rhino in week one. I think that's the first time we've seen that in week two. Uh, so props to Rhino for, uh, you know, fixing some of uh, the vision issues. But I'm still seeing that, you know, young player, a little bit of a mistake there from him. And going to cost Team Liquid a little bit as this will be a couple plates going over to Dark Wings as they're trying. Bradley, who had been kind of camped consistently in the top lane, sitting one and three, but he's got the rift making complete, and that is a big spike for Gwen. It is, and it's going to be much needed as as this game goes on. The side lane for Dignitas is where the issues are going to start to arise because uh, rise, wave clear, the ability to uh, cheat by using the ultimate and move quickly on plays and. Not to mention Gwen should be able to win both side lane matchups. It's going to really provide headaches for Ignatas as this game moves forward. So I like the fact they're grouping up. Still looking for plays now. Spike connect on to JJ. They can't follow it up just yet. Said it's going to be Rhino and Armeo bailing out of the jungle of Ignatas. All the while the flash coming in from JJ. Oh, He's found JJ. Yon. That's a lot of damage, but the heal flash kind of saves the life of Yon. But the kick to make <laughs> sure they take down Yon. Well played by XU with the pull back in on a JJ, making sure Armeo cannot escape. Shut down gold for XU. We teased how good XU's the Sin was coming into the season, and glad fans are seeing some of it early as that is a really creative angle and play coming out of the new jungler for Dignitas Academy. And he makes that play pay off, really, with that kick. That was a great play. It is a beautiful kick, and we got to see the replay of it. it starts off with JJ spotting out Yaw. Oh, my goodness, this angle from Axu just playing a little bit of bowling on the rift here as that kick 
Able to make sure that uh, Aphelios goes down. Also able to pick up the second kill in the back half. And Dignitas, once again, quite a bit burned there. So JJ and actually those are the two engagers for the side of Dig. And this Eclipse is coming from a flank. Both flashes are down. So at least they got kills uh, and the mid outer for it. I, I think it's worth it for Dignitas. But I want to see the response that Team Liquid has prepped. As they have flash on their playmakers coming up. Arreo just getting his back. Harry also about to get his back Copy. as well. We've seen that throughout this game so far. Blow for Lana blow, back and forth. going back and forth. I'm expecting the response to come in from Team Liquid soon. They got the bot tier 1 turret for Harry while it was traded for that mid tier 1 out of Dignitas. And I'm waiting to see where the play is. It looks like the play is going to be on to Eclipse in this top lane. The shield is blown, but Exu and JJ read this play to make sure they can scare off these members, even though Eclipse is burning Exu. a two with the ignite. The TP is behind. Here comes Darkwings, but Harry's at the wall, trying to see what they can do. Nice oh. effort to five. They got a kill on a Rhino, but now they got to get a little bit more on Armeo. They've got a lot of damage coming in from Spot, but they got a root coming in from Harry. All the while, Bradley's in the Eclipse middle. Back. They've got a Realm Warp away, but look at Eclipse. He's back. He's in the fight. He's looking for the flank. Showstopper in the back. Line, but not able to pick up Yawn. the kill. Set. It's going to be a double kill coming in for Bradley the whole time. Eclipse couldn't get it. He's going to be silenced. He's trying his damn this, but it's Yawn to silence the boss. And the way the team Liquid moves throughout this fight to make sure that they were staying as a group, focusing on the right people. I think that's the big difference in this one as I'm looking forward to see the replay when we get it. Because when that fight started off, Yes, Bradley did force out Eclipse early, but he lived. He had TP, so I feel like at Dignitas, were able to pick their targets and by time they had this, but it wasn't the case. No, and we take a look at this replay, and this is what we were talking about, the answer coming in from Team Liquid, what they were going to be able to do, and at first, it seems like it was almost a good read out of Dignitas. It is, but the cooldowns were just all spent, and once Harry gets here, Eclipse is there because he was chunked, and then watch Yawn. The way that Bradley and Yawn are just able to step forward in this fight... JJ and Darkwings didn't have enough cooldowns, right? They burned the ultimate right off the bat from Darkwings. He doesn't have the DPS at the moment to make sure that, you know, they can put the fights together. And the crown jewel of the comp is Spawn, who went down too early in the fight. So good read from Team Liquid and a good play from Bradley, who is really stepping up. I know that it was a tough early game for him, but the fact that he... Forced out equips and kept moving forward with Yawn was the big difference in that one for TL. And the fact that they make him waste his TP to get back into the fight, he didn't even fully regain his health when he came back into the fight. So he didn't really have that health bar to work with. So they could turn around after they got the kills for Yawn. 2-1-4 and four on this Aphelios. And look at this. Bradley, he's the one with full control in these side lanes. Nobody can contend against them. So Dignitas oh. are forced to answer anywhere they possibly can. Yawn's going to be the great answer they can take down the spot lane of Team Liquid. But they lost out on Darkwings in the side lane. I still like the fact that Dignitas is forcing because the scaling very much is not on their side. We like Team Liquid's comp the deeper this game goes. I like how JJ is fishing, and it was good to find Yawn there. He was in the choke. He was out of position. At least Dignitas are forcing the pace, just not respecting on sides. But hey, they get two kills. They're going to get this mid inner as well. Still a game that's going back and forth. It was good, Reed. This is why we keep saying it's the back and forth, the ebb and flow between this game. Because Team Liquid make a play, Dignitas make a play. Team Liquid make a play, Dignitas make a play. Getting the gold there Ooh, on the turret as well. This could be bad. And again, the ebb and flow. Eclipse looking for Bradley, but Armeo's on the side. You can't fight this anymore. Eclipse, this is not a duel you win anymore. Bradley is far stronger with that Rift yeah. Maker, and you can see what happens. He didn't even need Armeo, but he has him anyways just to make sure he's on a rampage. I mean, having a Armeo in your back pocket's not too bad, but uh, a poor read there from Eclipse, and will get properly punished by the side of Team Liquid Academy. As Bradley, from 3 to 4 3 and 2, big bounce back, and curiously enough, going Witchbane second, which that's going to be a new build uh, on the Gwen. If anyone's going to note the tech, I would expect Bradley too, as this that's is a favorite I pick of his, but Witchbane did see some buffs, and. Uh, good to see some more Lich Bane builds come through. That makes sense when you think about how Gwen functions. That's low cooldowns on this champion. Able to weave in those spells, even the needlework. So long as you're able to weave it in. What is it, a 1.5 second now onto the Lich Bane proc? Something like that. Yeah, it's something really low. Actually, it's not even the Lich Bane. It goes for Cosmic Drive first. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just dumb. I, I guess those items, that the Fiendish Codex doesn't build in the Lich Bane. That's an L. We'll... we'll I think we'll, it does we'll take that now. Chin. It does now. They just changed it recently, but it's you usually want to see the Sheen first too, right? 
Yeah, I'm just going to take the L. We're, we're going to take that one on the chin. It's, hey, you it's know what? Good. I justified it for you, so it works. Well, maybe we'll see the dark tech one day. <laughs> but at the moment... I appreciate this. I try. Our male, though, he's supporting his team by starting off the fight oh. early on the spawn, but spawn's no still alive. Nice effort to buy to pick up the kill onto the carry that they need to, but look at how Gwen is. All the damage coming through. That's why Bradley had to go golden first to be able to survive, Dig. try to wait it out, but a nice pull back in to pick up the kill for XD. The flash away to survive, too. It's a two for two at the moment. Top side for top in ADC. What a back and forth game as, I, I mean, Every single time a fight breaks out, they're just harping on, hey, this individual does not have Flash. We're going right on him. That's exactly what Team Liquid does with Spawn there. It, able to take him down, but the response from Dignitas was very good. Eclipse, I know he died, but he had a huge fight here. I think it was just a little early from Armeo when you see this. No one was yeah. really in position perfectly for Team Liquid, so Dignitas could eat that back and throw it back in the face. Oh, man. A Eclipse, I know this Haymaker... If Bradley doesn't go golden, that that's that's gonna that's gonna put a dent in the side of this Gwen. Uh, so Eclipse is trying to get up in the face of Gwen, going for that Sterak second, staying beefy. Uh, I, I'm just concerned with the fact that I think Dignitas have missed their window, and now that we're you know getting deeper into the game, Harry almost has the completed Frozen Heart against three auto attackers. So going to be pumping out massive damage on this Rise, given the fact that he scales off mana as well. Armeo, I really like the value of Jarvan in this comp, utilizing Terrain Choke with Yawn, and you have Braum as a frontliner too, who is, scales very well, given the fact that whenever you're able to auto-attack people, Braum is strong. And TL, up 1k gold, we are a minute out from this dragon. I, I think if I'm Dignitas, I'm really looking to push hard here. That is exactly what they do. They get the flash out of Harry the moment oh, they that's spot good. him. They that's have real big. to keep playing this aggressive style and try to see if they can fish for these picks out of Team Liquid so they can set up control around objectives. We are going to see if Dignitas can come back. We are 25 seconds away from the Dragon. They have total control over the bot room. They do, and they are making sure they are keeping out Team Liquid. They've set up lack of vision so far. Spawn is the one playing forward, trying to see if he can bait in Team Liquid into his hand. Same with XU now showing his face, but all the while Team Liquid, they make the call to try to see if they can bait out the Baron. Had it not been for that blue oh. trinket, they could have easily gotten that under the nose of Dignitas while Eclipse turns his attention onto the Dragon, and an Infernal Soul denied for the side of Team Liquid could be pretty huge. And so you just gotta be careful though, same with JJ. They're gonna get a little bit of distance, a nice kick away to deny the engage coming in from Armeo as XU dodges away from a lot of the damage. They are focused onto him. They're trying to see if they can chase down this Lee Sin, but the Dragon was taken by Eclipse, and now he can rejoin this fight. The hook coming in on the Rhino. It's gonna be a Glacial Fissure, but they put up the turret to get a little bit of damage. JJ's gonna be the first casualty, team, but Bradley, the big one gone. Rhino is the next one to fall. Team Liquid would have to be careful because the chase can come in from Dignitas now. But they got a lot of damage coming in from Yawn and Harry. Armeo can be a frontline for the team, but the zap connects to chunk him down low. Yawn's on the wrong side of the fight. He has to be careful that he's not chased down and hunted by Dignitas. I and mean, Dignitas just called the bluff of Team Liquid Academy, fishing around that Baron, take the dragon and take the fight in their favor. Still a very close game and honestly a dangerous Baron start for the side of Dignitas. I, Harry is able to TP back to this. I, I gotta believe that this is gonna force him off. As... Alright, Dignitas going to take a step out. Should reset, but a good fight from them as they were able to at least read the fact that Bradley was overextending looking for that kill. Now, I guess the craziness just does not stop. No. We have Team Liquid Academy now starting the Baron themselves. They're onto it, and they are whittling the sound fast. They get a lot of damage, but Armeo uh -oh. got chunked by that rocket. They got to be careful. Armeo, JJ's though. into the pit. Who's going to get the smite? XU's going to be oh, the no. one to secure it with the kill on Armeo. It's a one for one now with the Realm Warp out, but Dignitas steal the Baron. The gambit for Team Liquid Academy does not pay off, and... That rocket from spawn was huge. Not only do they spot Team Liquid Academy doing the Baron, it chunked everyone down. Armeo was so low, he was trying to hold on the smite till the last second, but didn't even get it off. No, this was a great read coming in from Dignitas. The fact that XU was able to get right into the pit, oh, get no. the kill on Armeo afterwards too. So it's a one-for-one -one trade where normally you'd expect that he trades his life just to get the Baron, but it's a one-for-one -one with Baron control for Dig. I'm just surprised that Team Liquid are pushing so hard because uh, I like the scaling they have. They have Ophelios with frontliners. They have Gwen and Rise able to side lane. Harry is fed out of his damn mind right now. And 
the fact they're playing this game out so quickly, it, this is not the calm, cool, collected, controlled Team Liquid Academy that we've seen the first three games this week. No, and I feel like it almost might be just them trying to play into the game style uh -oh. of Dignitas. Dignitas are the team that are fast and loose. They're getting the flashes out of Armeo. Glacial Fisher just under Eclipse. He's got the shield if he needs to, but Harry's cutting him back. There's going to be the Haymaker to pull back in on the Rhino to pick up the kill. One at the moment. That's the depth charge onto Harry. He's pretty tanky, but the re-engage coming into Armeo, and he's going to die even though he had the Gore Drinker. And look at XU with the kick onto Harry. Oh. They've got the damage coming in. He goes golden, but Yawn underneath his inhibitor turret. He doesn't have a way to escape from XU. XU's the sin is just too good as he is able to route Team Liquid Academy who are overextending trying to go for a kill in Mad Max School. That's the this, game. Yeah, this is going to be the game. you got 20 seconds until your main members spawn back up. Rhino will be here in just a couple seconds, but it's only Bradley defending the base against a barren up Dignitas. DP just to make sure that the minion survives. They're gonna stay alive. Oh, Bradley gets one. JJ I don't think they can turn from two anymore. Yeah, no one kills. They've got Bradley. Show right. Stuffer on to Rhino. Dignitas tie it up at one to one in this best of two to end week two. You know what, Bad Magical? For the first two weeks of the play, there's been something missing in Academy, something that I have missed dearly. Those are the bloodbaths. This was our first bloodbath, I feel like. <laughs> if 40 kills in a 28-minute game, back and forth. And I, I really like the proactivity from both of these teams. And I want to especially credit Dignitas because we were looking at their comp saying, you know what, we feel like this is the time where they kind of have to push hard. You have Azir, you have Jinx, but the other pieces of the composition we felt like got outscaled. And credit to Dignitas, XU kept on looking for poise, kept on blowing flashes, and hey, same with Team Liquid Academy, but in the end, Dignitas, they were the ones that were able to find that winning angle, and all it took was a Baron steal into a win a couple minutes later. I, just like that, it felt like the game ended. Well, I think it was not just the Baron steal. That was a really good fight from Dignitas on the top half of the map as well. They were able to split up Team Liquid, notice who was caught out a little bit too far. Rhino was the one they turned their attention on, so that way he couldn't jump back, and I love that kick from XU onto Hayri to split them away from Yon. So they could all focus their attention separately and they couldn't work as carries together. I, and XU's Lee Sin moves to 3 0. I, I mean, we watched XU play an amateur all of last year. Th this guy just finds crazy plays and crazy angles on this champion and does so yet again in this game when his team was. It was a close game on, you know, on the gold graph, but we still felt like that he really needed to push things for his team to make sure they had the winning angle. Credit to XU. Him and the rest of Dignitas were able to do that, even up the series and uh, stay in the middle of the pack for Academy. That they will. We're going to toss to a break when we come back. We'll knock on wood that we can actually get a Dignitas interview with Kangas. So stick around and don't go anywhere.
Hello and welcome back, everybody, for our post-match interview to close out the day. We have Dark Wings. Now, Dark Wings, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, perfect. There's a little bit of a delay, but we actually got you on. Thank you so much for your patience with us. Uh, 40 kills in 28 minutes to close out the series. And I want to start off with uh, with your thoughts on... Kind of the competition right now, because you just went up against Harry, one of the best performing mid laners in Academy last year. And I know you're one of the newer names to the scene. So how would you rate uh, your competition so far in your first two weeks? Um, so far, I think the competition is like decently strong. Um, I don't think anyone is like super far ahead of anyone else right now in terms of like mid lane. So I think it really depends on like who's like playing better on the day or like whose team is performing better. Okay. Yeah, the, the classic team answer. I like that. It's very helpful. <laughs> who's giving you the hardest time in lane so far though? Um I think Copy's been pretty good in lane. Um Harry's definitely also like he's he's performing well. Um yeah. So far those two have caught my eyes. Okay. Copy and Harry, I'll keep my eyes on them going forward then. Uh, I, I want to give you an opportunity also because uh, you're one of the newer players in Academy, um, but you've had a long stint in Amateur. You've actually been around quite a while. So what's the biggest lesson that you've learned already playing in Academy in your first two weeks? Because I know it's only two weeks. That's eight games that you've already gotten under your belt. That's quite a lot. In Academy, um, a lot more of like the team cutters – than um, just like into like picks. Uh, like there's not as many like champions that are just completely smashing lanes, 1v9 performing. Um, so yeah, I think that's like the biggest difference for me. Okay, bringing it back to the team again. I like it, man. You're, <laughs> you're always so <laughs> deflective right now. You got to hype yourself up, Dark Wings. That's what we're here to do right now. So let's ask you a question about yourself then. That way you won't be able to skirt around this. What are your personal goals coming into the 2022 year? Because as a player new to the Academy, there's a lot of eyes on this show right now. What are you trying to prove? Um, I think this year, definitely my goal is to be like, to become the best mid in Academy. By the end of the Okay, like, you want to hit the top. Of the year. Reaching for the <laughs> stars. How do you measure that though? As as a player, like looking back at a year, does that mean that you need to win, or does that mean that just personally you want to look back and say I did a good job? Well, it's definitely like a combination of both, but I think I think like being able to like see that like I've improved a lot more than like winning matters more to me because. I think like this is only like the beginning. Like winning right now is like only like parts of it. Sure. Yeah. The the uh, improvement is the primary focus and the primary goal. I like that. You got the most wholesome answers that I've had so far today, Darkwing. So I just want you to know that. Uh, <laughs> I want to bring us on to a, a more lighter tone, though. Now that we've gotten to know you as a player a little bit more, I want to get to know the team and specifically. Not, not even just the, the players on the roster. Who is in charge of the Dignitas social media account? Because we've all been asking, and we need to know. Can, can you just, like, talk about them for a bit? Just explain who they are and why they're so awesome? So our social media manager is called uh, Bobbit, 
and he he just like comes in like and just he's like he's got this idea like let's just do this and then we're like okay let's let's do it and then we do it and it's just like post so much stuff and it's like we like it yeah <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I would say we were going to try and poach him for our show, but our, our social media is already fantastic. I just know that uh, he and I are currently at war with each other. So I'm going to keep my eyes on Bobic then, uh, see see how uh, things are going over there. Now, um, I want to close out the interview uh, again get to get to know you on a more personal note as well. I know that you visited L.A. back uh, for the TSM Scouting Combine. Now, did you get a chance to explore L.A. at all when you were here for that? Yeah, I was actually – I went out to, like – the k-town area for a bit and it was really nice over there uh, i went to santa okay. monica pier and that's pretty much like the biggest areas i've been to my last trip and i'm excited to keep exploring la have you ex have you explored sautel yet because that's where all the pros go and i want you to know that that if you want to if you want to get into the la lifestyle you have to go to visit sautel um no i have not um, I'll keep that on my list of places to go. Okay. All right. When you go to Sautel, I want you to go check out a place called Murugame Udon. Check it out and then leave a review on Twitter. All right. And tag me on that. Cause I need to know what your opinions are. And then also tag Madge magical to let him know that it is the best food you've ever had. Cause he would disagree with me on that statement, but thank you so much. Dark wings for the opportunity to get a chance to talk with you finally for the post game interview. Congratulations <laughs> on the win and best of luck going into your matches next week. Thank you, Kankas. All right. With that said, we're going to uh, bring in the casters again right now. Kabi, Magical. Hey. Welcome back. Magical, I know you Murugame heard that. Murugame is I know you still heard. good. It's just not like the best. There's a lot of good things on Sautel. Like, Murugame is It a, is the it's best the food. Be it's really good. Don't get me wrong, people. It is really good. It's just not the best. Magical, you know me. It's all about cost to calorie Magical. ratio, and you're not going to find anything Okay, I'll better give you that. I'll Udon give you that. Man. Yeah, exactly. All right, Cubby, though, let's bring you into the conversation here, because uh, hopefully we can get you out to L.A. sometime to explore some of the food. But before then, the series itself, Dignitas Academy picking up that win in what I believe you called the first scrappy game of the season not, not, <laughs> that we've had so not far. Not scrappy, bloodbath, I think, specifically. Bloodbath. As I, it really felt like a back-and-forth game, and... I, I had a lot of fun watching it as I think that, you know, while it, 40 kill a minute game, it was it clean? No. But do I think that each team was trying to make plays around good ideas? Yeah. So I, I, I do mm -hmm. like to see that, fortunately, uh, for the side of Dignitas, their execution and ideas were a bit better as they even up the series and uh, actually put together a pretty nice week for themselves. Absolute great way to close it out. You love to get those yeah, wins at the one. end. But let's take a look at how everybody performed on the week because we do, of course, have to wrap up the show with the current standings. Ooh, and this is the schedule from the day specifically. Exactly, yeah. CLG, of course, 2 owing over TSM. The big one, FlyQuest. What happened on that stream two B? 2-0 over Immortals, Oh, my man. God. And also Cloud9 with a 2-0 over 100 Thieves. Yeah, I mean... It makes me think that ours I were I saw it on Twitter, now. and I was like, what, what happened? What in the world happened? I can't wait to look back at the videos and look at the fonts to see exactly how those games went. Because Cloud9 beating 100 Thieves, one of the teams that we're touting as being the competitors for CLG currently. And then Immortals, what happened? They go from undefeated to not being able to win a single game in Week 2? Yeah, it, it is early in the season. These teams are still coming together. But I think this really solidifies CLG early season as the team to beat. Uh, especially given the fact that Hunter Thieves dropped 0-2 to C9. That's very surprising yeah. to me. So, so this is where we're at right now. CLG 7-1. Wow. Hunter Thieves and Dignitas tied for second at 5-3. CLG Academy are full two games ahead of anybody looking at their heels. So let's take a look at next week and see what the matches look like to maybe get an idea of who can catch up to CLG Academy and also get a look at the teams lower on in the standings and what their matchups Ooh. look like. CLG find themselves against current tied for ninth place FlyQuest Academy at 2-6 and six on their record. So, uh, presumably, should be a, a, a nice week for CLG fans. Well, it depends if, what FlyQuest we get. If we get the FlyQuest that just beat Immortals, True. maybe not. Because I gotta see those it was bots. a close game between yeah. CLG and Immortals <laughs> just yesterday. And so, who knows? It could If it was a stop from FlyQuest, or even like where they controlled and looked a lot cleaner in that game... It might be a lot closer of a series than you'd expect on surface. 
I, I my eyes immediately. Oh, yeah, go for it, Cubby. I mean, I, were you gonna bring up Team Liquid versus Hundred Thieves? That is exactly yeah, what I was gonna do. I feel like that is just the the one jumping out of the page. Is that was our matchup for Academy Playoff Finals? That was our matchup for Proving Grounds Finals. And now we get our first matchup as they go toe to toe this year. That was the winners bracket Proving Grounds uh, Finals and the Grand Finals. Not to mention LCS finals. finals. They yeah, they had a best of 15 between those two teams throughout the uh, you know uh, summer season. And it won. I think it won 14 games. Yeah, it it went to all 15. 15 yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it literally went to a full 15 games between these two. It was absolutely insane. So rivalry between the academy teams right there, and also just cool because the uh, team Liquid four and four, but when they look good, they look much better. Good, this week, especially yeah. this week. So uh, yeah. Final thoughts, though, um, on Dignitas Immortals. Let's, let's quickly cover the rest of these ones, and then Golden Guardians, Cloud9. Magical, I'll give you Dignitas Immortals. I mean, talking I like it. It. we were just saying with Immortals, got to watch back the games, what happened today, because Dignitas True. are a team that I actually really like to watch because they are just so coin flippy and so aggressive. We saw the bloodbath in this game, and I'm curious to see how that's going to be against Immortals, and then after that, it's just... I, I don't know how that... It's hard to know on the surface without having seen the games from Immortals. And Cubby? Golden Guardians, Cloud9, immediate thoughts. Uh, I, How did C9 200 Thieves? I need to go back. Yeah, right? That's what, that's uh, I'll, I'll have we don't have the information after. we need. I'll, yeah, I'll have more <laughs> for you after. Okay, that's, you know, uh, completely respectable. Uh, but that is week three, day one schedule already after two weeks of Academy. We have a lot of really cool storylines mounting up here, and I'm excited to keep them going forward. But that's it for the show, guys. That's it. Uh, I just want to give a big thank you, of course, to everybody uh, behind the scenes in production, keeping the gears running today. Give a big thank you to everybody watching in Twitch chat for keeping up with our antics and hopefully not cringing too hard. Uh, thank you to my amazing casters for keeping up the energy today. Magical, especially you in that game six. It's just, it really skyrocketed after something happened. I, I don't quite know what. Um, and of course, the biggest thank you to all the players for putting on that performance today and giving us this night of games. We're going to be back next week, starting Wednesday, same place, same Thursday. time, with more. Okay. Oh, Thursday, right. We're going to be back next <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> same place with more Academy Action coming your way. We'll see you there.